All right, welcome back to Missing Persons TV. I'm Brian Ladd with my co-host, Debra. Uh, today is July 26, 2009, 10.04 p.m. Tonight we're going to be discuss discussing two cases that I completed last night. Uh, they are case number 784, Megan Maxwell, and case number 785, uh, Gerald Randall Marion. Uh, we'll also be reviewing uh, case number 864, I'm sorry, um, 673, which is Haley and Marie Cummings. Um, I have Debra with me and Kevin Doyle. How you guys doing? Great. Glad to hear that, Kevin. Deborah, how you doing? Are you feeling any I'm better? I'm doing fine. I know you've been a little sick under the weather. Are you feeling any better? Uh, not really. Hanging in there, though. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on with us tonight. Um, I did do those cases um, that you sent me last night. They are posted. Uh, I didn't send them. I didn't send them to you an email, but I, they are up on the site. Do you want me to send them to you now, or, or you just want to go on the website and get them? Uh, no, I just usually look at them on the website. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Um, if you guys get a chance, um, there I, I got a picture of a fish. It's uh, not the last video, but the video before that. Um, I had a little show. I was showing you how you catch halgamites and what you, how you use them for fishing. And uh, the show before that actually shows you what you can catch. So if you want to see that, it's, uh, uh, it's if you go to the Missing Persons TV um Actually, it's blip.tv forward slash missing persons and click on the archives. I think that's what it is. I don't know. Is that what, is that what it is, Debra? Hold on. Uh, yes, it is. Blip.tv forward slash. Oh, no, it's not. No, it's missing persons dot blip dot TV. If you click on the and then. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, and then click on uh, where it says show archives. You'll see a, you'll see a thumbnail of a fish. Uh, and uh, it's me and my son Samuel um, showing you the fish that was caught. Pretty big fish. And he caught that right down the road. <clears throat> okay, Kevin, I've got your uh, your information too already via email. It's posted. Oop, log me out again. All right, well, let's get get this started then, um, unless you guys have anything to add. Nope, I'm fine. Okay. Deborah, do you want to bring up anything? Okay. Um, Deborah, I can't hear you. All right, guys, hang on a second. Deb, are you able to? Okay. But are are you able to read the case information then? Okay. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and start. Um, first case of the night is case number 784. This is Megan Maxwell. I just put her picture up right now. Uh, the case was open July uh, 26, 2009. Um, dream drawings were done last night. Uh, Deborah, what information do we have for Megan? Okay, this case uh, for Megan was actually requested by Sue. Mm -hmm. When I was uh, talking with her, she's been following this case. Um, this is someone that um, does a lot at Gales Forum. Um, anyway, Megan has been missing since earlier this year. She's actually been missing since April 26th of this year. Um, she is 19 years old, and uh, they found her burned-out car um, shortly after she went missing. Uh, she's missing from the area of Newport, Tennessee. Uh, she Her car was a 2001 Mitsubishi Eclipse. Uh, so this 19-year-old young lady, 5 feet 6 inches tall and 115 pounds, um, went missing, and then they located the burning car. Um, that was found on uh, U.S. Highway 25 and 70 by an uh, off-duty Newport police officer that was passing by. Um, it shows that she had been alive at 4.27 a.m. when she called a friend to let her know that she was leaving her father's home in Newport, and um, she had she had gotten a call that there was something wrong with her dad, and um, then um, she called her friend and said that after she finishes her cigarette, she'll be on 
she'll be on her way. Um, they found her car only a few feet from the river. And some of the leads that they've had so far indicate that there was activity at the river before the car burned. As far as what that activity is, I have not been able to find out. Uh, they don't think that her disappearance has anything to do with domestic violence. Okay. Sorry, that's, that's, that's my fault, actually. What, um, go, go ahead, keep going. I'll tell you why. Okay. They, they don't think um, that it has anything to do with domestic violence. Uh, the way this whole investigation is being pursued and they're looking for her, um, sadly, from the get-go, uh, with the circumstances and the leads they have, they have more or less pursued this as looking for her remains, not looking for a live Megan. I, I really hope that, you know, the leads they have and, and the things that, you know, they have on this are, are wrong and that she's fine. But it it's not really looking that way from everything I've seen. Okay. What do you have on her case, Brian? All right, I'm not totally I'm not totally sure what I have. Um, I know Kevin does have a live, which which is good. Um, I just uh, th there's a website for her. It's helpfindmeganmaxwell.com. That's the music you just heard. I put a link to that um, right right up at the top of the case file. Um, I have uh, th three dream drawings. The f the first one says says the word sick. Um, after that, it says she talked about escape, uh, the word island, um, 3329, I guess it's 3,329 yards uh, from police spray paint on road. Um, carnival worker has coin. Um, could it be possible it's a carnival worker may be involved in her disappearance, uh, and that carnival worker may be with the person I have drawn in the second dream drawing. Uh, it, says, it says basically it's a man. Uh, he looks to me like a young man, short hair, um, uh, indentation on the chin, I believe. Uh, and he could be wearing a cross. There is there is a cross. It's on the right hand corner of the of the dream drawing, but um, it's not around his neck. Um, so maybe he's holding the cross, carrying the cross. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, the third one says, uh, "Not a rag." Um, and then it says, uh, "Where they would go at night." And I'm not really sure what that is on the bottom. Um, maybe that's a dock. On, on maybe a river or something like that, or a lake. I'm not exactly sure, um, but there are no there are no symbols. There's no symbols of death or anything like that uh, that I that I have. Um, but just, just looking at this, it doesn't seem that good. But uh, hopefully she is alive. Um, Kevin, I know I see your notes. You you have a live. Do you want to read those? What's that, Brian? Do you want to read your notes on this case? That's uh, Megan Maxwell, right? Right. Oh, Kevin. Yes. I, think, I think I think I messed up. I think I reversed your notes. No, I, I sent you the wrong ones, and I I resent the email. Um, okay. Do you have she's alive? Uh, Megan Maxwell. Do you have she's alive? Cause for I, Megan Maxwell, no, no, oh, I don't. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, I I got your email now. Hold on. No, it's you, my fault. You, okay, go ahead. It's my fault. Okay, read, read what you got. All I'm updating right now. Go ahead. For Megan Maxwell, I have abduction, murdered, uh, a 32 to 38 year old male, used baseball bat to help kill her. Pacific Heights. He desires more killings, and I have no further notes on that. Okay. Do you, are you able to see the uh, the dream drawings I have posted? Um, see if that person may look like the person you're describing, the male, 32 to 38. If you can, if you get a chance to look at that, if you're not looking at it now. Um, okay. Pacific, Pacific Heights, I believe, is a movie, and it's also a place in San Francisco. Is that right, Deborah? Or California, San Francisco, around the... Is it in the San Francisco area? Yeah, remember. Michael okay. Keaton played in a movie called Pacific Heights. Okay. I can Google that too. Is is that is that where? The, do I need to Google that or or is that is that in San Francisco? Do we know? I believe it is Los Angeles. Los Angeles is totally different from San Francisco. Uh. <laughs> Hold on. I'm gonna look it up. I'm looking too. Okay, Kevin. So your notes for the next case are are they 
Are they the, are they right too? Or do I need to change anything? For uh, Ger Gerard Randall? Yeah. Hold on, I'm going to put it here at Skype. Yeah, Pacific Heights is San, San Francisco. Um, I have a map here of the Pacific Heights area in San Francisco. They call it Pacific Heights, San Francisco, California. Right. Um, okay. Do you want a link or a screenshot yeah. no, or I got it. anything of that? I got it. Okay. Got that in a map. Where'd she go missing from again, Deborah? Um, in Newport, Tennessee. Okay. That is a long ways away. Yeah, a long way from home. Okay, thanks, Kevin. No problem. Deborah, anything else from this case? Uh, no, not really. Okay. Uh, w once again, the, the website uh, uh, for Megan is um, uh, www.helpfindmeganmaxwell. Uh, it's M E G A N M A X W E L L. And that uh, the link to the website is um, on case 784. All right, our next case is case number 785. This is Gerald Randall. Let me get his picture up here. Um, this case was um, posted to the web today. Dream drawings were done last night. Um, Deborah, what information do we have for Randall? Yeah, he goes by Randy. Ah, uh, yes, okay. Gerald Randall Marion, and he goes by the nickname of Randy. Okay. Uh, he's been missing. This case was actually requested by Sandra via email. Uh, he's been missing since February 9th of 2008 from Dinwiddie, Virginia. His date of birth is October 20th of 1982, 25 years old at the time that he went missing, 26 years old now, a 5 feet 8 inches tall to 5 feet 11 inches tall, 145 pounds, brown hair, brown eyes, a white male. Uh, they say he normally has a goatee, no tattoos or body piercings. Uh, he was last seen wearing a green Carhartt jacket, blue jeans, and black sweatpants, camouflage boots. Um, he was uh, hanging out with friends at the time that he went missing. Um, they were grilling out and they were uh, riding an ATV. Um, they did end up recovering the ATV that he had been riding um, the next day, overturned in a creek, but no signs of him were found. Now, what happened was um, they were... Uh, he was at a friend's house, and a bunch of them were there, and they were taking turns riding the ATV. Um, they were enjoying, you know, like I said, grilling out. One by one, they took turns riding the ATV um, through some surrounding woods and then coming back with it. Uh, when it was Randy's turn, uh, his friends say that he grabbed a helmet. Uh, he gave him a goofy grin. He flashed the peace sign, and he took off, and that was at around 10.30 p.m., when he didn't come back about an hour later, they got concerned. Uh, they repeatedly called his cell phone and they got no answer, but they say that his phone went dead. Um, that's when the group started searching the wooded area for him. When they couldn't find him by about 3 a.m., they reported him missing to law enforcement. Uh, they were not able to locate the helmet that he had been wearing. Um, like I said, they had recovered the ATV the following day. So, um, what do you have on uh, Randy's case, Brian? Uh, two dream drawings. Um, first of all, the, uh, I found a website. Uh, it's a MySpace account, myspace.com forward slash help find uh, Randy uh, Marion. R-A-N-D-Y-M-A-R-I-O-N. And, and like the other case, I put a link up there um, to his site. Um, first dream drawing says uh, his girlfriend took, took him to courthouse uh, in the number 619. Um, to courthouse, I don't know if that's a if it's a courthouse like we're thinking, if it's a house, if it's something to do with courting or something like that. I am not sure. Um, but the symbol on the bottom right could be the uh, the symbol that I normally associate with death. Unfortunately, the the next one says um, uh, drugs were in his beer in shelves. Um, he could have been poisoned. Um, 
and uh, there's a drawing of where the poison may be located. Um, it's on some type of shelves, and that's um, I've got a drawing of the shelves and the items on the shelf. Um, but that's all I really, really have. Um, so looking at this, it's possible maybe he was drugged uh, and taken somewhere. Um, and I'm not sure if he's alive or not. I hope, hopefully, he is. Um, that's all I have, Deborah, on this one. Kevin, I have your notes. Would you like to read those? Sure, Brian. Uh, for Gerard Randall Marion, I have uh, murdered two males, one black and one mixed. Drug drugs involvement. He was set up chest peak area. Police have enough evidence. They just need to put the puzzle together, and I have no further notes. Okay. Um, as far as drugs, could that may be poison? Do you know? Um, it's possible, but that's that's all I got. I mean, I didn't know if it was uh, illegal drugs or over-the-counter drugs or whatever. I just got drugs. Okay. Um, as far as Chesapeake goes, there is a Chesapeake Bay, uh, and then there's also uh, Chesapeake, Virginia. I'm looking that up right now. Um, do, do you yeah, know? I found the link. I put it in the Skype earlier. Oh, okay. Okay, thanks. I'll add that right uh -huh. there. Anything else you want to add? No. Nope. Okay. Um, all right, Deborah, that's all I have on the case. Um, we'll work on both of these as soon as we get off. Um, and I'd like to get with Gail or possibly Travis so they can help us with this too. Anything else on this case? Deborah. Uh, Randy's family is um, hoping that maybe he just fell and he hit his head and wandered away, you know, and doesn't know where he is, and, and maybe even, you know, a, a kind stranger has taken them in. Uh, that's something that his mom tries to comfort herself with. Mm -hmm. um, it, I'm not finding anything here immediately that says anything about, you know, any kind of lifestyle things that would show that there was something wrong. He was a high school graduate. At one time, he talked about being a rescue diver for the Navy. Um, family says he really liked helping people, and they don't think that he would have disappeared on his own. Uh, he had things that he was doing at the time. He was restoring a 68 Mustang, and there were other things in his life that he was happy with, so they just don't think that, you know, he'd go missing, um, you know, that he wants to be missing or anything like that. They're hoping that, you know, he banged his head, maybe has amnesia or something like that. His brother, Tony, left a good job in West Virginia to return home and search for him. Mm -hmm. um, this case has hit America's Most Wanted. Um, so, you know, they're working really hard trying to find him, but there's really not, you know, a lot to go on. Okay, are they treating so, it okay. as, a, as, as, as possible abduction, a homicide? Are there suspects? He's just listed as being an endangered missing. Uh, his, okay. his family wants to think that something, you know, happened. They don't think he'd leave on his own. Um, as far as, you know, foul play or anything like that, uh, I'm not seeing that. Um, at the time that he went missing, um, you said something in your dream drawings. You referred to a girlfriend in courthouse. His girlfriend took him uh, to courthouse in the number 619. Okay, he was hanging out with a girlfriend at the at the cookout at the friend's house at the time picture, he went missing. A picture of her? And when I refer to them searching the woods, um, when he didn't come back on the ATV, that's the woods around his friend's house. Do we have a picture of her? Um, no, I'll, I'll do some more looking and see if I can come up with one. Okay. Yeah, please. Um, if you guys can find any pictures or anything um, in any one of these cases, always at the top where it says post comments here, uh, that link will take you directly to this case's uh, forum link or forum section. Um, yeah, well, there is an article here. It says, um, go ahead. It may that um, his family turned to a psychic for help. Um, not sure who the psychic is, but the psychic is listed as being from out of state mm -hmm. and um, says that Randy was thrown from the ATV and he ended up in the canal. Uh, she said that he's about three quarters what, of a mile what, down river from where the ATV was let's found. Get the look. Um, she commented that he Give broke his right collarbone and hurt his right shoulder really bad. Can we get a map of where he went missing? Yeah. I'll Let's do that get right. That too. Can, can, can you uh, 
Just give me the address. I'm, I'll put it in Google Earth. Um. If you can get one. Hold on. Yeah, I just had it. As far as where they found the ATV, I just had that. Okay. Um. Okay, his ATV was found at... Okay, they say it's about 200 yards away from a friend's house, upside down in a nearby canal that leads to the... Um, to a Appomattox River? A P P O M A T T O X. I thought I had the actual highway numbers here of cross streets of where that was. I'll look some more here. Okay. Um, I've got Google Earth open. We'll look at this. I'll take screenshots of that too. Um, anything? I don't have a more exact location yet, no. Still looking. Scanning no, through I'm, some articles. I'm doing the same thing now. Stuff here. I'm going to leave out Randy. Just put... Okay, um, here's an article. It's titled, ID May Take Days. June 9th. Um... Investigators are trying to determine the identity of a body that was recovered from the Appomattox River. When was the date? Uh, the article is from June 9th. I'm trying to read through the article here. Okay, but I don't think that would be him. If I'm going I'm to go to the website again. They help find us. Help find Randy. Okay, here's a link for that article. I'm waiting on the link. No, oh. What article is this? Deborah. Pardon me? What article is this? Um, that's an article regarding the remains that they found. Okay, right, but I was just at... I was just at his website, though, and okay, it doesn't say anything about Randy's that. Okay, not Randy's remains. Okay. Still looking. I'm looking for okay. more here. Do we know who that was? Because <clears throat> on the MySpace, it's, it's, um, it's still saying he's missing. Marshall Edlow Scott, okay. 72 years old, was the one that they found in the river. Okay. Uh, they, the law enforcement said that no cause of death was officially determined, but they said it was an apparent suicide. In the a river? 72-year-old man. In a river? Mm, yes. Apparent suicide in, in a river? I okay. don't know how. <laughs> No, it seems strange. If there was a bridge or something, maybe he jumped from, but... Okay, I see that. Okay. I see the article you just sent. Um, now I'm looking up... I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll work in this case after... Yeah, I'm after, after. jumping off something called Campbell's Bridge on January 5th of this year. And this is the other person? Yeah. Okay. Let, let's, we'll work on this after the show. We'll find out where he went missing from. And, and just, and, and see. Hold on a second. Because how long, they've been looking for a long time. No, no clothing, no, no articles of clothing or anything like that, right? Right.
Okay, so we'll we'll work on this case after after we finish this show. Um, let's move on, okay? Deborah. Okay, would that be moving on to uh, Aji? No. Uh, did we want to we wanted to cover Haley? You said we wanted to, to do any updates or anything? I didn't think we were doing that oh. on this show. Oh, I thought you wanted to. I had the, I had the graphic up. Uh, well, this is Haley Emery Cummings. Um, uh, Deborah, is there anything in the, anything new um, on this case? And they were trying to get at that one location, um, the trailer on it. I, I think it was adjacent to the property. Um, since we weren't going to cover this, I am not prepared the way I would like to be prepared for okay, it. Okay, I tell you, we'll, we'll, we'll cover that in, on another show. Um, if you have any information for Haley, um, you can go to www.bringhaleyhome. Dot com and Haley is spelled H-A-L-E-I-G-H or HaleyBug.com uh, and, and we have it case number 673 um, we have a lot of information posted on this case we've done a lot of shows for her um, I do know that um, uh, Haley's name has dropped from local news reports um, just seems to fade away like a lot of these cases do uh, and that's not good um, we have a lot of work here we, uh, we have a location um, for her uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I don't think that she's alive, but I have a lot of information on this case. Um, and if you want to go to Missing Persons Forum, a lot of that information and links to my case file, which is case 673, uh, is there. Um, so we're, we'll cover Haley um, you know, on the next show, okay? Okay, okay that sounds uh, like I a thought, plan. I did, think we were gonna, I did think we were supposed to cover it, though. Um, Okay, so we got that done. Uh, this is Aji Desir. Uh, he went missing uh, January 10th, 2009, from Mockley, Florida. Deborah, do you want to say anything for this, this for him? For him? Uh, go ahead. You can take care of the little guy tonight. Okay. Um, we really need your help. Uh, please go to findaji.com. Uh, we're asking everybody um, downloads his picture. It's a PDF picture. Print that. Uh, if you don't have a printer. Or you don't have any ink or whatever, you can go to Kinko's or um, I believe Office Max. We'll print pictures for free on missing people. Um, get those printed and post them everywhere. It's important to get his picture out there. Um, police have done extensive work looking for Aji in the Immokalee area. Gail St. John's been down there looking. Um, a lot of area has been covered, um, no Aji. So that to me state, you know, seems that he's out there somewhere. Um, he's, uh, he's, six years, he's still six years old. Uh, he has the mental capa capacity of a two-year-old. Um, he's not able to cry out for help. Um, he easily, easily uh, would be um, able to, for somebody to be, so if somebody took him, it would be real easy for them to do, to do so, him not to say anything. Um, so we really need to get his picture out there. We really need to uh, report on this case. Uh, we try to do that on a nightly basis. Uh, so if you have any information, you can, um, for Aji, you can call 1-800-THE-LOST. Uh, or you can go to his website, which is findaji.com, F-I-N-D-A-D-J-I.com. Uh, if you guys don't have anything else tonight, um, we're going to end the show. Okay. <laughs> All right, good night, guys.